Welcome. NOAA has eventually got round to issuing the Global Climate Report for January of 2018 and this video is going to be a summary of its results. Well let's take a look at the hot and cold spots around the globe. I can only find one record cold pixel in this whole map and that's in the uh, southern Pacific near Antarctica. However, there are a large number of record warm areas all around the globe. This would indicate that the globe is still warming, despite the fact that we have a La Nina in progress, as you can see from this area of cool ocean in the eastern Pacific. Well, let's see how January of 2018 ranked compared with previous Januaries. On the land, it was the eighth warmest on record. On the oceans, which are not warming quite as fast, it was the fifth warmest. And when you combine the two of them, it was overall the fifth warmest January on record. Now these are surface temperatures, not upper atmosphere temperatures, which they're often confused with. Let's take a look at the troposphere. The lower troposphere is where most of our weather is formed. There are two groups that do analysis of this. That's the University of Alabama Huntsville and Remote Sensing Systems. Now they use microwave sounding to get an effective temperature. Their instruments are sensitive from above the Earth's surface to about 15 kilometers in altitude for the lower troposphere. This red area here is the uh, weighting function that their instrument has on the atmosphere. So it's integrating all the temperatures from just above the surface to 15 kilometers weighted by this function. This gives them an effective uh, altitude that they're measuring temperature at, at about four kilometers. And the temperature typically there is about minus 10 degrees centigrade. So that's a full 25 degrees centigrade cooler than the surface. Despite that, they are measuring a consistent warming trend, both groups, of 0.14 degrees centigrade per decade. Not a cooling trend, as a lot of people like to say. So despite what you might have heard on blogs or on TV or radio or here on YouTube, the satellite data, which is what this is, is showing a consistent warming trend. Let's end this confusion once and for all. You'll often see plots like this declaring no global warming for 18 years and nine months. And the data you'll see in the background here is the data from RSS, which is the data I just showed you. However, what they don't mention is that they're cherry picking both the beginning and stop time to make uh, a trend seem to be zero. I wonder why they don't show this plot, which is the plot from the actual RSS website that shows a nice linear upward trend in the overall uh, temperature of the uh, lower troposphere. What the, the bit that they showed is just this part here. And what they're doing is they're choosing deliberately to have a large peak at the beginning of their uh, data set, which is the El Nino peak of 1998, and ignoring or truncating before you get to the peak of 2015-2016, which actually was a, a higher temperature peak. When you include that, you get um, an overall increase in global temperatures of about 0.14 degrees centigrade per decade. So if you see that sort of thing, the people that are showing it are being totally dishonest. So now let's have a look at the mid troposphere, very much the same setup as before, except for the instruments here measure from just above the Earth's surface up to about 35 kilometers. And with this weighting function shown in orange, the mean altitude that they are measuring temperature at is about eight kilometers where the temperature is about minus 35 degrees centigrade. So that's a full 60 degrees centigrade cooler than the surface temperatures. But surprisingly, they're still seeing a warming trend even there, both consistently at about 0 0.09 degrees centigrade per decade. So we begin to see the picture here. At the surface, we're seeing a fairly large increase in global temperatures. Uh, just above that, we're seeing a somewhat smaller increase in global temperatures. And above that, yet again, in the mid troposphere, we're seeing a yet smaller increase in global temperatures. But all three layers of the atmosphere are showing a distinct warming uh, trend. Lastly, let's take a look at the stratosphere. No, no, not that stratosphere. This one. That's better. Same setup as before. Uh, these are the analyses by UAH and RSS. Now their instruments here address uh, the altitude range from 10 kilometers up to about 35 kilometers. 
and with this weighting function the equivalent altitude that they're measuring the temperature at is about 20 uh, kilometers in altitude and that corresponds to a temperature about minus 60 degrees centigrade so we're now talking 75 degrees centigrade below the surface temperatures and look here we're seeing cooling why are we seeing any cooling well there's only one theory that can explain why this uh, a layer of the atmosphere is cooling and that's the anthropogenic global warming theory. And that's because this layer is heated both directly from the sun and from below from escaping infrared radiation. Now if the sun were causing global warming this layer would actually uh, rise in temperature faster than any other. But what's happening here is as we put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere less of this uh, infrared radiation is escaping from below at the appropriate wavelengths and is therefore uh, not heating the stratosphere as fast as it would before so the stratosphere is actually cooling. Let's take a look at global precipitation that can come in many different forms and NOAA summarizes all of this in its monthly maps so this is the map for January of 2018. Now record dry areas are marked by dark brown record wet areas are marked by dark blue so let's first of all identify the record wet areas and so let's do that and there are relatively few of them now let's do the same thing for the dark brown dots on this figure and you can see there are rather a lot of them so it does seem as though at least for this month that the anthropogenic global warming theories predictions are coming true now let's talk about sea ice now I can't figure why but everybody seems to argue about this most of all in January of 2018, the Northern Hemisphere sea ice was at its lowest extent ever. Here's the plot. There can be no doubt about this. And you can see the overall trend. NASA has two satellites in orbit called GRACE. They use gravity to measure the amount of ice in the ice caps. And the picture, if anything, is more depressing than the sea ice. GRACE has been operating since 2002 and all through that time we've seen a steady decline in the annual sea ice levels. In fact amounting to 286 billion tons of ice lost each year. That's 286 cubic kilometers of ice. That's a little bit hard to get your mind around. So let's try and put that in context. Now some of you may be familiar with New York City and the size of that great big city. Here's a picture of it taken at night, rather pretty, don't you think? So how big would that slice of ice be if it was placed on top of New York City? Unfortunately, I can't actually get it all in the frame, but it would be about this sort of size. So that's the amount of ice we're losing every year from the uh, Greenland ice sheet. I'm afraid the picture for Antarctica isn't much better. The amount of sea ice uh, there is the second lowest on record. And when you look at the GRACE data, although the rate of loss of ice is much smaller, 125 gigatons per year, 125 cubic kilometers in other words, that uh, is still a, a, a consistent rate of loss. Now remember the reason why Antarctica is probably not melting quite so quickly is first of all it's further away from the equator than Greenland. And secondly, it has some very special circumstances like the ozone hole above it, which are causing strange effects with the wind there. I'm afraid the prospect looks fairly dim. If you look at this picture, you can see uh, the La Nina here in the Eastern Pacific. However, the models seem to show that we're going to move back into an ENSO neutral phase in the spring of this year and with an increasing probability of an El Nino by the end of the year. So we could be in for a very warm 2018 and 19. So let's summarize. January of 2018 was the fifth warmest January on record. Despite the fact that it was winter in the Northern Hemisphere and we had a strong uh, La Nina. There were more droughts than heavy rain. Sea ice and polar ice continue to decline. Hence anthropogenic global warming continues on apace. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>